There is enormous talent and lived experience. They are potentially tomorrow's leaders. What the Alito Foundation does is it helps those young people close that gap in self-esteem, self-confidence, social capital. And what's important about that is so often people become successful and then they deny their backgrounds. They pull up the ladder and leave people behind them. What the Alito Foundation does is people come and tell their stories from the beginning. So you see where they started out, how life began. The question is, what kind of leaders does society want and deserve? So I'm Kenneth Olissa. I grew up in a district called Heisen Green. Lots of people helped me when I was younger. I can think of a number of times in my life when I thought I achieved the pinnacle of everything and I wasn't quite sure what would happen next and something else amazing comes along. Grew up in a single parent family in the back streets of Nottingham and people went out of their way to help this boy who seemed to have some buzz about him. I flatter myself I must have some talent, but those talents have been hugely boosted by other people intervening. The two drivers for me are accepting help from strangers and follow your heart. Your heart never lets you down because it is, at the end of the day, you. My name is Veronica Martin. I am the Chief Operating Officer of Alito Foundation. I manage the projects or the programmes. I'm responsible for the alumni and also for liaising with the companies that sponsor our leadership programmes. I've always worked as a fundraiser for charities for the past sort of 20 years. I was brought up around a big family. We all literally lived on the same road. It was really important to share, to enjoy each other's companies, to have dinner together on a Sunday. It was a very traditional Caribbean upbringing. Alito is exactly what I would want my child to go through. We brought a very simple and pure programme together, which allows people to remove all the barriers to, to, you know, racism, all that sort of stuff. What I talk to the young people about, or even my children, is just the understanding of different people, different cultures, different races. If a young person, no matter what their color or background or religion is, if they're growing up together, I think there'll be a change. From a very young age, I always liked the good things in life. And I lived in a council estate. There was iron gates on the door. There was urine in the lifts. I always felt, why can't I do better for myself? From the age of seven, I used to clean out my dad's taxi. I used to get paid for that. So no one talked to me about going to university. I had to learn as I went along. So I left school at 16, despite being in all the top classes. I sent over 120 CVs out. I got 28 interviews, got rejected 28 times before I got my first job in the city. It's not that simple. And when I went to the city, I experienced classism for the first time. So all the kids who have middle-class backgrounds with degrees, they always worked in the placement side of insurance, while the working-class kids worked on the claims. I was thinking, what's going on here? Why can't I work over that part of the business? And I thought, right, I need to be in an environment where I'm going to be judged on my merit. That's when I got into sales. Diversity is important because it's good to have a mixture of people, to have a difference of opinion. I might have someone from a middle class background. I might have a female who have different views. I don't care as long as I've got difference of opinion. And so when you sit down and they're not yes people, we can have a discussion and we can make great decisions. I look at Ken, I think me and Ken are very sim similar things, but I also see where polar opposites in a lot of things as well. Again, that's what makes the world go around. Yeah, Gary and myself are top Arsenal supporters. As becoming a, a, an Arsenal fan, you, you become a, a part of a community. We're like the thinking club. Sometimes in, in Emirates, you can hear a pin drop. 
We all should be optimistic. If you look at our past, all our past, you know, we have optimistic parents or optimistic leaders who push us, challenge us to, to move forward. I'm a person who always look at myself as a constant learner. You know, I'm learning till I die. There is something to be said when you are part of something which by your support and encouragement, you can watch it grow into success. Alito is bad. And the final point, Arsenal, what can I say? Before I die, we are going to win the Premiership. I'm probably what you would call a typical Alito kid, but probably actually slightly below their level of intelligence because I never went to university. I come from a tough reality background. My parents divorced when I was eight. There was violence in the household. I lost my sister to leukemia at 13, so life wasn't easy. Having been through that journey, having been mentored by some wonderful people, having been involved in sport, having overcome racism, having worked as hard as I possibly can, I find myself in a position where actually I can lead a group of people that I understand. And what's important actually for me is that you just don't throw money at problems, is that you understand where people come from. So I think I'm best placed to kind of lead this organisation because I've been there. The young people today can really make a big difference on our future. And I think for anyone who's sat there not believing that, they've got problems. Go and find someone who's 13, 14, 15 and get a view as to how they see the world. So an intervention for our programme ensures that these young people become the leaders of tomorrow, can go into organisations, help change thinking, help change direction and ultimately have an impact on the world. We run a summer school each year where we bring half a dozen, maybe ten amazing successful people who then share their success with tomorrow's leaders. We principally focus on is young people who've come from tough reality backgrounds. They're possibly the first person from their family, their school, their estate to get to a great university. And they arrive, obviously, top of the pile to discover the people who've had their education paid for start much higher up. We've got to get these kids in front of the right type of people so that they can really climb that career ladder and then they can make the difference. What we do by giving these young people leadership skills is help them to gain access to social mobility, learn about social capital, how they network and influence other people. And by doing that, they actually require some level of support. And that's what we do. And you look at around the table of the board of directors, some of the biggest businesses in the world. How many are from Bain backgrounds? The people who make them the money don't actually reflect around the management structure of their businesses. As a foundation, we are making a statement to the world that we have some great leaders who demand a right to be around that table, and we will back you. It's quite a rigorous programme to get on in itself, just from application all the way through to the two-stage interview process. Veronica, she has essentially invented a method to identify future leaders. I literally work alongside the team from the beginning of the leadership programme all the way through to the end. If they've got any issues or personal issues, they can contact us 24-7, literally. <laughs> we give them a business challenge question, which typically you'll give to a first year hire in a consulting company. And they then have two weeks to solve that, which culminates in a presentation to a panel of some very high profile judges. do things like public speaking workshop as well where they're encouraged to stand up and give a two-minute pitch or do improv speaking or actually give feedback on the speakers as well and these are transferable skills that they can actually take to the workplace from tomorrow what we want to give them is an inspirational experience so they'll hear from past delegates who have been on the program different business leaders even our Sir Kenneth stands up and, and speaks if you're not optimistic, 
it's very difficult to be a leader because the people you're going to lead need to have confidence in you that you're going to take them to somewhere better. Hearing people's stories, you then start to get a sense of feeling of, actually, why can't I do that? To the world, it shows that young people have got something to offer, that they do have a voice on the leadership programme. And so literally the world can see that these young people, who actually could be the next president, the next chief exec of a FTSE company, and most of all can actually run a company if they were given that opportunity. The question is, what kind of leaders does society want and deserve? Well, the answer is those that bring people together. If you don't understand the people whom you are leading, you, by definition, are not going to be a very effective leader. And so it's kind of a no-brainer to me. You need leaders for society coherence, and you need leaders who understand the society that they are coherent and leading to be effective. AKA, as society is diverse, you need diverse leaders. My biggest achievement would be running the Alito Foundation as Chief Operating Officer and impacting the lives of almost 500 young people now. We're at a stage where we've got so many amazing kids, but we need to open it out to a lot more. How do we reach to more younger people throughout the United Kingdom? We talked about having a thousand leaders by 2020, or well, a thousand leaders, that's young people who have graduated from the programme and then are off doing wonderful things in the world. I'm in a fortunate position that I can help. Now, that's what the programme should be about. If there's more people like myself in senior positions, then we can help more people. It's all about how we raise money, make sure we're clear with people that are looking to invest what we can do with that money and really look at programmes that we can help develop the children. We've got to make sure people at the Alito Foundation don't feel limited of what they can achieve. I'd like to see Alito young people getting honours from the Queen, being awarded a CBE or an OBE. Strength, encouragement, direction, reliability through the alumni in coming back. This is not just a one-off week in their life, this is a lifetime journey to see them proven themselves, they've proven themselves to Alito that they can achieve great things. And I just hope that society will see that. Keep together, keep the network. We are stronger as many than we are as one. That's why the Alito Foundation, I think, has got a real good cause going forward. There's a Greek proverb that says if you sit by the banks of the river and wait long enough, your enemies will float by. And over the years, those evil people have slowly floated by into oblivion because they would all take, take, take. It's not sustainable. So no, the good guys, we'll win in the end and we just have to keep being good guys. <laughs>